has a copy of that too. So, um, so for the moment, rather than just um, hearing from me, I'm going to hand straight over to Jen. If we can ask that people stay on mute during the presentations, but we'll have some time for questions and answers afterwards. And hopefully you'll enjoy everything that um, that we have to say today. So, um, so I'm going to switch myself on mute now to hand over to Jen. Thank you, Claire. Thank you for that introduction. Just getting my share screen going. There we are. Can you see that? Yeah, great. Brilliant. Um, well, thank you very much for inviting me today um, to speak with you. There's a few familiar faces in the group, but um, lots of people I don't know. So, um, hi, my name is Jen Heal and I'm a design advisor at the Design Commission for Wales. Um, if you don't know us as an organisation, um, then do look us up um, on our website and, and find out more about what we do. We promote good design in the built environment and um, one of our key themes um, is placemaking. And as Claire mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Placemaking Wales Charter, what placemaking is, and then sort of some, some thinking around what what you might do or get you thinking around what you might do. Um, so I'll, I'll go through the, the slides that I've got and then if there are questions afterwards, um, I'll make, be sure to leave some space for that. Um, so I guess what is placemaking is a key question and Claire very usefully outlined there, lots of things that placemaking involves, um, which is great. Um, it's a word that gets used a lot um, there's sort of lots of different interpretations of it and so this um, first part explores a bit more about what it is but um, placemaking is very much at the heart of planning policy in Wales now so if you're doing any project that involves um, planning then planning policy Wales says that you should embrace the concept of placemaking um, and that that should be embraced in plan development and um, development management and um, so we need to be um, working in that context and the, the aim of that is to create sustainable places and improve the well-being of communities. Um, planning Policy Wales 11 um, has a piece about placemaking, about it being a holistic approach to planning and design of places, um, drawing on the area's potential. I won't read all this out in detail, but considering the context, function and relationships between a development site and its wider surroundings. So very much taking a big picture and moving away from the idea that everything happens in silos. So the idea that you might deal with housing in one area, that you would deal with employment in another area, that you deal with transport in another area. We know that places blur all those lines and to have a good place, you need to be um, looking at all of those things together. So it's looking beyond a site and beyond a particular land use into thinking about the whole of a place. <clears throat> um, launched Planning Policy Wales, there was more to be done to promote placemaking in Wales, more to be done around a common understanding of placemaking and encouraging people to think about placemaking in their day-to-day -day activities and um, planning for it in the future. So we worked with Welsh Government to develop a group called the um, Placemaking Wales Partnership, which drew in people from lots of different disciplines um, involved in the built environment um, and lots of different groups. And we work with that group of about 25 representatives to develop the Placemaking Wales Charter, um, which you can see on the left there. I will talk about that in a bit more detail. Um, and as Claire said, um, different organisations are signing up to that. Um, Alongside that, we developed the placemaking guide, which goes into a bit more detail about what placemaking is and what it involves, and then signpost people to existing guidance, which um, works in support of that, because placemaking is very much um, bringing together of different disciplines and different activities that are already happening. So um, we, we point people to those things. And um, one of the, the key things I talked about is understanding what placemaking is and um, I throw this in there as a sort of, you know, 
something to confuse people as much as anything else. But uh, I don't know if anybody knows what this is. But um, <clears throat> if if not, this is um, the kilogram, and um, it was the internationally recognised um, kilogram against which all other kilograms would be measured. Um, and so apparently that was up until 2019 and it's now changed and it's now something else, but it's quite a useful representation of something that is very clearly defined and very clear, um, 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 very clear that you can measure other things against it. If your kilogram doesn't weigh the same as this kilogram, it's not a kilogram. Placemaking is not like that. Placemaking is not one thing and it cannot be defined by a particular thing in a jar. Um, placemaking is much broader and so we need to understand the full range of things that it involves. And the, the talk about placemaking and its significance um, really comes from um, a period of developing places that are fairly placeless. And so sort of not meaning to start with a negative, but places that are not dis very distinctive to their locality, that um, have a focus on cars and roads that, um, that don't sort of necessarily support community development and cohesion and integration um, and, and leave us lacking in the built environment with things that can support um, good places. So, to feed into the guide, we looked into a bit of the theory of placemaking, and I, you know, I don't want to bombard you with this too much, but um, if you think about a place that you like, um, it could be, you know, somewhere you're uh, dying to go on holiday when you're allowed to go away somewhere, or just somewhere that you've been visiting regularly as part of your walks during lockdown, or or somewhere that you enjoy spending time, and you think about the qualities of that place and why you like it quite often you will find that those qualities match these three elements that make up a sense of place the physical setting the activity and the meaning so if you think about the place that you really like there'll be something about this physical setting which draws you to it it could be a nice place to sit it could be a garden it could be a square it could be a street that you enjoy um, you might also like that place because of the activity that takes place there. You might go there to meet friends, you might do people watching, you might play sport there, you might watch your children play, um, you might um, walk around that place. And then there will be an element of meaning in that place. So um, you associate your memories with it, things that have happened, there might be something that's culturally or historically distinctive about that place. And all three of those elements go towards making a place with a, a good sense of place. And, and very often it's easy to focus on the physical setting and think, right, we're going to do some place making. We're going to focus on doing works to a space or doing works to a street. But forget about the other two, which are really important in creating good places. So what's going to happen there? of the place. So I encourage people when thinking about placemaking, if you think of nothing else, try to remember physical setting, activity, meaning, and think about those three things in, in the work that you do. And that, that, that is a useful starting point. Um, the guide, this image is taken from the guidance document, just sort of um, shows that in a bit more detail. So the activity that happened in a place um, we've just sort of drawn, sketched some of those out. It could be, could be big things like a festival. It could be small things like a book sale. Um, it could be um, the activity of a, a platform or a bus stop and, and what happens in those places. Um, the physical form, as I talked about, streets, spaces, sitting under a tree, perhaps play areas, but also the wider landscape of a place. And then, and then the meaning of a place, the history of it, your memories, cultural associations. And um, a well-known architect, Yang Gale, who's done a lot of work on the quality of spaces and places, um, says first life, then spaces, then buildings. So thinking about what's going to happen in a place before you then design the space and then um, think about the buildings that happen around it, because the life is the thing that we want to encourage and support in a place. 
Um, and we try to bring those things through in the placemaking charter. We try to think about key principles of what makes a good place and key things to think about at any scale of development or change in a place. And we came up with six principles. Um, they're, they're down there at the bottom. Um, I won't read them out completely now, um, but would encourage you to have a look at those if you can. Um, and um, I'll just take you through in a bit more detail, um, just to say that um, the, if you go to our website, there is a video um, online which takes you through those principles and um, explains those in more detail. And they are, sorry, can you hold on a second? I'm in a meeting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the postman's at the door trying to get my attention. <laughs> um, he's left something on my doorstep. I'll go and get that in a minute. Um, so we start off with people and community. So the, the people that we are designing and making places for are the most important aspect. So thinking about what their needs are and how to support those. The location of development, where we build, um, how it connects to existing places has a really important part to play um, in whether it is a successful place and often sets a lot of things in motion that are very difficult to overcome at a later date. So getting the location of development right is important. Um, how people move around, we want to encourage active travel, walking, cycling, we want to reduce dependency on car use um, and so thinking about those early decisions um, about um, how people get from place to place obviously is linked to location because if you can reduce the need to travel then um, that helps to make things easier. Uh, the mix of uses in a place um, so we we want to encourage places that um, are not just about one use and um, to help generate activity in the life of a place and um, so thinking about what uses could be brought into a, a place and um, you know I, ideally that involves you know places where people live and work and play and socialize but it could be as simple as um, within a residential area putting in some space for communities to come together it could be those sort of community growing spaces it could be using the bus stop as a focus for your community activity and working around that designing the public realm I think when people often when people think of place making they go straight to the design of the public realm um, but um, it's an important part but you need to sort of get the other things in in place as well um, and designing that public realm to support um, walking and cycling, play, um, ecology, biodiversity, um, green infrastructure can all play a part in that. And then the identity of the place. So how are you reflecting the unique features of that place through, through the design of the public realm, through the design of buildings, through the use of public art, through um, any means that, that makes it distinctive. So active and distinctive places are what we're what we're looking for and and those sort of roughly map back to that form activity meaning um, triangle that we were talking about before so the form being about the location the public realm the activity being about the movement and the mixed uses and the meaning about the people and the identity and um, I use this picture sometimes to to draw out some of those ideas because in the foreground there you've got a place with um, with a lot of activity happening, people sitting, people cycling, walking, um, restaurants, waterside location. Um, you know, it's it's got a, an atmosphere of um, of good activity and life and identity. And, and sometimes people say, "Oh, but what about those those um, buildings at the background? They're, they're very dense." And actually, yes, they are dense, but you need that to support the life of the place and have that mix of use that we've got in the foreground there. You need to be thinking about um, having enough people in an area to support activity. So you, you can't design your public realm to have be full of life if you've got no people around. So the, all those things need to be thought about in conjunction. Um, the placemaking guide is on our website, um, so if you want to have a look at that, um, go to the placemaking section and look at resources. Um, it talks in more detail about what I've just said on what is placemaking. It goes through thinking about different things of implementing placemaking in practice. It's got a section on why it matters in relation to um, um, health, the environment and 
um, financially, and then there's a series of case studies. And as I've said, placemaking isn't the, the job of one particular discipline. It, it needs to be um, considered by and taken up by all of these disciplines and more probably, um, and they need to be working together to, to make that happen. Um, and then just a little bit in relation to, to getting you thinking about, you know, what, what you might do. And I know there's a range of people on this call and, you know, you're, you're involved in different things. But um, I think if you if you Google placemaking in the UK, you probably come up with projects like this, which is King's Cross in London, um, which is a great example of placemaking, but completely different to the context that many of us are working in in Wales. Um, you know, the regeneration of these areas is really important and thinking about, you know, obviously they brought a lot of life to that place and there's lots of things happening there, but most of us are not working at that scale, most of us are not working in that context. And so just to think about placemaking in your sort of in your communities, as I've said, it can be about, you know, creating a place where you give people permission to interact with one another, so a bench, a community notice board, a pop up library. You know, bringing some of those things together can help to create that life and social interaction that um, we want to see um, really working on engaging the community um, understanding what their needs and wants are in terms of facilities and provision for those facilities um, uh, giving permission for people to use a space for activities and um, holding markets and um, You've got some examples here so would come under the tactical urbanism banner, which is about reimagining the use of spaces in a sort of lightweight way. So whether it's about painting streets or using parking spaces in a different way, all of those things are placemaking. So it's not just your big projects, which cost a lot of money. There are a lot of smaller things that can be done that really contribute to, to placemaking as well. Um, and yeah, places where life happens. This is a, an image from a group called Project for Public Spaces, and they talk about the power of 10. So 10 things happening in a place um, encourages that life of a place. And very quickly to finish, um, you know, why, why bother doing this? Well, there, there are a lot of benefits that come from this. Um, and, you know, it's not just about supporting coffee shops, although I do love a visit to a coffee shop, and I'm looking forward to when that can happen again. Um, <laughs> we know that you know, if you've got a mix of uses, you see more people, that is good for you. We know that we miss, we've missed that, haven't we, over lockdown? We miss seeing people. We know that those social connections are good for our health and well-being. We know that walking is obviously good for our health. Um, we know that green spaces uh, are good for our health and they apparently make us more helpful and they're good for our, our healing as well. So there are multiple benefits for that. And so just that was a very quick run through, but just sort of encourage you in your context to think about, well, what can you do to contribute to placemaking? What can you do that can change the form of a place or change the activity of a place or, or enhance the meaning of a place to, um, to, to create better placemaking? Thank you very much. Happy to take Thanks. questions. Yeah, so if you want to, Claire, I don't know how much time I've got left. Um, we've we've got a few minutes. If um, if anyone does have any questions, or by all means, um, type them into the chat if you prefer. Or um, we're going to have a breakout um, discussion later as well, where we can talk a little bit more about the principles and how they how community led housing can um, contribute to those as well. Um, does anyone have any questions for Jen? the moment. Uh, I, can see a, I can see a hand. Uh, Chris has got his hand up. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, thanks. Sir. Um, yeah, that, that was really interesting, Jen. And, um, you know, I suppose I feel a bit conflicted about the concept of placemaking. Um, for me, places exist, period. Um, and when you talk about making, rather than, and you did talk about a sense of place, the assumption is that uh, it, 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 it's working on a canvas that, that is problematic to start with. Um, and, and in a sense, what happens is then experts are brought into places to make that place better. And I think the whole issue around this 
subject is the lack of social realism that this placemaking charter addresses. Because if you're living in a very bourgeois environment, as I do in Pontcana, and I use Coffee One, you know, we can talk about self-actualization in very simple terms. If you're living in a housing estate, as I have worked in up in Tredegar in St. George's Court, where security and antisocial behavior actually drives so much of people's emotional sense of place that the idea of bringing in regenerational change of a physical nature and thinking about a lot of the wider issues that you've talked about actually becomes largely redundant because the agencies, and I know I've worked with them, social landlords um, who are responsible for looking after the care of those communities, tend to see these things as solutions, um, quick wins whereby we do a bit of public art, we do a bit of regeneration, and all of a sudden the lives of those people are going to be transformed. And it patently isn't the case. So while I completely agree that a lot of the values that are embodied within placemaking are, are very laudable, I think we have to talk about the social contract. Because if we don't talk about the social contract, we cannot bring the community into a proper dialogue about how they want those places to be. Because the issue around this is who decides what's good for a place. And I think too much of this is driven by experts and not enough of it is driven by community. So this is why I'm fascinated by this conversation because it is critical. And I don't think enough is placed on the social contract in, in driving this agenda. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. I think that's I think that's a really good point. Very well made. And um, and I think the, um, the the reason people and community were at the top of that sort of wheel of principles and come first in the principles is because, you know, we're not just doing this for the sake of it. It is for the it is for the people in that place and they should be involved in and engaged in and and, and driving it. And too often they're not. And um, I think sort of working out how to how to support communities rather than to um, intervene in communities is is really important and we probably don't have all the mechanisms in place to do that yet but um, yeah be be good to see more examples of that happening thank you thank you I think um, Joanne has a question uh, I do. Let me just put my video on so people actually know who I am. Um, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that point that Chris made, actually. I thought it was really valid. And I know um, I work for Pobble Housing Association, so we're signed up to the placemaking charter. Um, and it was interesting for me when I saw it because I work in community development. I actually work in the largest um, sort of stock density area that we've got in Newport and our East region. Um, and it's fascinating to me as someone who's working in an existing estate across two existing estates. Um, the idea of placemaking is very much um, in the development realm. So it's new communities. And it really troubles me that um, actually, I think as Chris said, you know, there are, because those new developments are being designed in this way um, and you can't design out everything, you know, we've got new, flagship developments and there are still issues with antisocial behavior and various other things you know um maybe less so um but when we've got our historic schemes you know the approach that you need to take that it, to those is so different um because they aren't mixed tenure and there are so many deep-rooted um i don't want to say problems and issues but you know j just the makeup of those communities is different, how they interact with the surrounding communities. You often have estates that turn their back on potentially affluent areas that surround them. And those people don't want anything to do with the people who live in the middle and the people who live in the middle feel really alienated from the people on the, who live on the outskirts. So, you know, it's really delicate. And I think for me, a real passion of mine is not forgetting those communities and leaving them behind with this placemaking work and just concentrating on shiny new developments that you know are all singing all dancing and then everybody who's unfortunate to live in an old um you know 1970s scheme just you know get on with it tough luck you're not going to place make where you where you live or if we are it's, it's not going to be effective in addressing some of the deep-rooted things that are going on there um so it's just following up what chris said and i work in it i see it myself and just want to make sure that you know i work with those communities and we don't want them to be left out of this it's not about new developments 
um, and shiny new things. We need to look at places that exist already. Yeah, thank you. And we're always keen to build our, our um, stock of case studies and examples of things that are happening. Um, we are working on a um, placemaking newsletter as well, which will be going out probably quarterly to the signatories of of um, the charter. So we hope to sort of use that to, to highlight some of these things or, you know, that could be a particular topic that we pick up um, um, in one of those sessions. So by all means, if you've got examples or you've got things that you're thinking of, um, then, then get in contact because we'd love to, to draw some of those out. Thanks. That's great, thank you. I think um, I think there's definitely a role for communities creating homes as well to look at to look closely at the um, people and communities principle of the charter, and and you know and address how communities can be more involved. But I think that actually hands over quite nicely to um, to Karen, if that's okay, and, and the issue of place plans and how communities can get more involved in that sort of thing. I think um, I think the comments from Chris and Joanne actually um, lead quite nicely into that if, if everyone's happy and we're going to have a breakout um group session later for you to discuss some of these issues in smaller groups too and it'd be good to hear people's feedback about how um how the project can help facilitate some of that community involvement as well but for the time being i'm going to hand over to karen to um to talk to you about place plans great thanks claire um can you hear me and see the presentation <laughs> Thumbs up if you can. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Th thanks. And following on from Jen, um, you're right, Claire, you know, um, going to look now at place plans. So, so I'm Karen Probert, um, Planning Engagement Officer, and I work for Planning Aid Wales. So we're an all Wales um, charity and we work closely with communities across Wales on planning related issues. And I was going to focus in on place plans this morning. So um, Claire's asked me to look at how can place plans help com communities engage with the local planning process. So a few sort of back to basics for some, I guess, some people that understand the planning system, but it may be a new concept for some. So I thought I'd sort of put, put it in context, really. Where do these place plans fit? Um, so we've got national planning policy. Um, there's a steer there and uh, Jen mentioned planning policy Wales and, um, you know, we, we've got the, the national framework um, that then filters down to um, local development plans. Your local council areas will be um, producing local development plans and they are the main material consideration then for planning applications and um, they are planning applications are determined by the provisions of an LDP. So that, that's just giving the context really of moving down from, from national policy steer through, you've got your local development plan um, through to a planning officer determining a planning application. The next slide again sort of demonstrates that and it shows also where things like planning policy Wales that Jen mentioned, um, technical advice notes, you, some of you may have come across those, how they all fit in to the sort of the policy tree of planning. And you'll see at the very bottom there, so moving down from national planning policy, you've got your strategic plans, Again, your local area development plans. Um, so if you live in Cardiff, it'll be the Cardiff LDP, um, Monmouthshire LDP. So each of your council areas will have an, a local development plan. On the, on the bottom level there, you've got supplementary planning guidance and that's where place plans fit in. So a place plan can be produced by, um, by the community at community level and it will filter into your local development plan. So that, that, that's uh, just to demonstrate really the level of, of where a place plan fits in. So just to describe again, it, it sort of not knowing the audience that we were going to have this morning, but just um, to describe really, so to let you know if, if you're not aware of what a local development plan is. So they're frameworks for development. 
um, encouraging investment in infrastructure in an area. They can protect environmental assets and they're the main material consideration when um, determining a planning application. So LDPs, for example, they're the one that you've got there in the picture, Monmouthshire. Um, so important um, policy documents that everyone who's, who's sort of dealing with development in their area should be aware of. And again, as I suggested there, you've got the supplementary planning guidance, you've got policies contained within the LDP, and then you've got supplementary planning guidance. So some of you may have come across um, SPGs as they're termed on renewable energy, affordable housing, um, design, residential design guides. These are what a planning authority would call the SPGs, the supplementary. They go into more detail on, a, on an LDP policy. They're locational theme based. Um, they can't contradict an LDP policy, but then they're supplementary to it. Um, and this is again where a place plan can fit in. So they you know, place plans are important, um, and, and that's something we're going to look at now in the next few slides. So place plans. So I just wanted to put that as context, really. Um, to, to sort of demonstrate that you're moving down from national planning policy right down and place plans form the community level um, planning um, um, that you can, can look at. So place plans are the local level land use plans and that's where we need to remember they are land use plans and I'll just um, talk about the new town example that we've been working on um, over the last few months or last year or so actually. And um, it's interesting to, to note that a lot of well-being issues come out when you start consulting the local community. A lot of well-being and placemaking issues um, come out of that consultation. But it's, you, you do need to remember that a, that a place plan is very much land use um, based. They are generally, the ones that I've worked on and worked with, they're generally um, started by a community or town council. Um, that that's sort of generally where the um, they sort of develop from, um, but there's nothing to say that another community group or or another community lead within uh, within an area couldn't um, establish and, and go through the steps required for a place plan. Um, but it, generally, I would say that the community or town councils sort of take the lead on them initially. Um, they very much can link to a community plan or, or community strategies. And as I've suggested, ultimately, um, the aim really is for the plan um, after the community have been involved and written this plan is for it to be adopted by your local council as supplement, supplementary planning guidance. So the, the, this diagram here just sort of demonstrates where they fit in, really. So on, on the top, the WBP is a well-being plan. Um, on the left hand side there, you've got LDP, which is your local development plan. Um, and then at the bottom is a community plan. So um, I know a lot of community or town councils have um, produced um, community plans, you know, action plans. They've gone out to the community, asked what community wants, and they've come up with a, a community plan. So a, a place plan is, is more a land use um, planning document that will fit in strategically with an LDP. And that sort of demonstrates, that diagram demonstrates that really. So it's, it's sort of one step up from a community plan, but there is um, very much a crossover with it. So place plans, they must have input from um, the local planning authority. It's, it's, it's something that you can't really start without their input. Um, they, it, 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 it's very wise to, to get their input in it because ultimately you're going to pass the plan back to the local planning authority and want them to adopt it as part of their local development plan. So, you know, our advice is at the very outset, if you're thinking to go down the route of producing a, um, a place plan, you, you'd get the local planning authority involved, the planning officers in the in the policy team, you would be your main um, contact at that point. And um, with the new town example, I'm going to sort of look at in a second, that, that has worked very well. And actually Powers County Council regen team, their regeneration team, 
actually um, gave funding to Newtown Town Council to produce their place plan. So you can see that that link with your local council is very important. And, and you know, often they may be, you know, may potentially be a funding pot there um, to allow to allow that community place plan work to, to un be undertaken. Um, a very strong evidence base is, is needed. Um, so this sort of community engagement, getting out there, discussing, um, getting feedback from the community, it, it can't be done in isolation. So it can't be a town council or a community council sort of saying, right, we're going to do a place plan, we'll we'll write it, we'll we'll decide on what's going to be included in it in our meetings and um, sort of close doors in that sense. It, it, it has to be something where you've got community engagement across across the board and, and that evidence base needs to be demonstrated um, along the way. So place plans, what can they cover? They can cover a whole ream of issues, you know, and, and as Jen said, there's, there's a whole load of things that cover be covered by placemaking. Um, I guess the people involved with this morning's event are perhaps more focused on the housing side of things. Um, but, you know, place plans can look at design, environment, um, transport, parking, but and these are all land use issues. Um, um, when we start moving into perhaps well-being, um, um, crime, um, litter, those sort of issues may not necessarily be so much sort of land based. But um, as the new town example, again, I'll talk about in a minute, they have managed to include those issues in and they've included them um, as projects. So they've got their place plan policies, land use policies, and then under each um, heading, they've moved into more project themed um, issues. So they, they've managed to mesh well-being um, and land use together in, in one plan. So th this slide is, I've just put this in quickly really to show the importance of evidence. Um, so it, it can't be a plan where sort of it's opinions or aspirations or, or we think we need more affordable housing or, you know, we think there's a demand for um, more, um, you know, a market or, or you know, it, it, it can't be that type of thing. It does have to be genuine evidence that comes through. Um, there's a few examples there, character surveys, um, uh, housing market surveys. Um, and, and so it has to be based on facts and, and figures and, and genuine evidence that's coming through. And, and to be honest, that can be done just by talking to people in the local community. You know, it, it can be very much done by having those conversations and asking people their views um, and also having that link with the planning policy team as well. This was an interesting one. I put this in really because I, of, of the audience and people that are involved this morning. Um, you know, your role locally is you've got the local knowledge and you represent your local community, and and and, and that's fantastic. Um, but with local knowledge and then your broad community engagement and the evidence that you can collect, you have an increased um, influence. And this is where you, you may decide to go down the place plan route. So and I, if there may be town and community councils here now um, with the people being presented who think, oh, yeah, that's something that we'd like to do as a, as a community or town council. Or you may be someone who wants to filter in. So you may want to ask your community or town council, oh, is, you know, is it something we can do? Can we produce a place plan? And I'd like to be involved in it. So I, I keep mentioning Newtown. Um, Newtown um, approached us um, a couple of years ago now to help them. Um, so we, we've worked with them as consultants um, over the last couple of years and um, they have, they're just coming to the final stages of putting their um, place plan together. Um, so that was a joint initiative and as, as the sort of um, logos they show, it was, it was Newtown Town Council, it was an organisation called Place Studio um, and ourselves who, who worked as consultants on it and then Powys County Council very much involved in the process as well. So it was very much a partnership pro, um, process um, and we were very much involved with the community engagement side of things, sort of, you know, advising, setting things up. Um, 
So why, why did they want a place plan? And, and these, this slide has actually come from the town council. Um, they, they produced this for me. So they wanted to engage with their community. They wanted to influence planning decisions. So they felt that they, um, for, for one reason or another, they felt that there were things going to be happening in Newtown. Um, mentions there the bypass. There was going to be a new health campus. There were developments happening in that town where they felt that they wanted influence and input in, wanted to be more proactive. And they were also encouraged by their local planning authority um, and actually being the first one outside of the Bracken Beacons National Park. So they, the first one in Paris, the first um, place plan. So um, both parties were really keen to get to get it moving. Um, the context of it, their community plan was coming to an end. Um, again, I mentioned the developments that were going to be happening in Newtown um, and they did have experience. There was an organisation called Open Newtown where, um, where they, there was experience of evidence collection um, really enabled them to get um, a large um, lottery investment into the town. So um, the town council knew that by collecting evidence, and working with a local community, there was potential really for funding to be brought into the town. We won't dwell on this one really, this time scales, but it does show, you know, November 18 project started. Um, we got involved then January 2009, we, 19, sorry, the stakeholder events, community engagement, the workshops, the surveys, the, all the things that we did to engage the local community. There was a, a, a slight pause, COVID there, you can see April to June 2020, there, there, there was a pause, um, but they did, they did well. Um, we stepped back from the process once we sort of passed over all the evidence gathering and the town council, um, they have actually got a dedicated officer within, within their town council, Sorrel White. Um, she, she's a really great contact if anyone wanted to, to you know, give her a ring about the process. Um, and they were fantastic. They sort of produced the plan, wrote the plan, and it's only just, it was sent to Paris County Council and Paris County Council have just ended their statutory six week consultation period. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, in the next month or so, the new town place plan will be adopted as a uh, planning policy as SPG, Supplementary Planning Guidance to the LDP, which basically means that any planning application now in the new town area, a planning officer will have to, um, the material consideration will be the local development plan and also the new town place plan. So that, that you know, it, 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 it has to be considered now in any um, planning decision. So it's, it's very important in that respect. And, and hence the need for really good and robust evidence, um, which I mentioned earlier. So this is it, this just shows the, the level of community involvement, really. Um, you know, we had over 100 survey responses. We arranged 11 events. We had a number of stakeholder meetings, 7,000 comments received, over nearly 60 local organisations involved. So it was it was a really good engagement um, project and, and really got people inspired to get involved. Um, this was the very first stakeholder event we held. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have been to events there, but, you know, sticking the post-it notes on the wall, what are your issues for the town and, and getting everything out there. Um, and, and this is moving back now to sort of Jen's talk earlier about placemaking. So a lot of you can, you know, almost guarantee that most of those um, post-it notes that were on the wall are uh, relating to people and communities, identity, location, all of the placemaking um, issues that, that Jen, Jen spoke about earlier. Uh, we work with local schools, so the, this is showing the schools and again giving the, the local children, the, the youth of the town, um, the opportunity to get involved and not sort of um, downplaying the issues you know letting them as, as, as much as the adults to get involved and put their issues across so ultimately after going through that process and you know the post-it notes and gathering all the information and writing up the comments um, the topics that are now included in the place plan are, are those and 
you know, surprise, surprise, they, they are place making type themes, aren't they? You know, um, open space, business, learning, employment, housing, um, tourism, culture. So, you know, it's all there. And the, these were all the things that were coming out. Um, none of these were set in stone at the beginning. They all arose during the process of, of producing the place plan. So the, these met very much came from the local community. Just put this in as an example, really. This is just a, a page out of the place plan, and this is the open space um, theme topic. So it shows how they, um, why is this topic important to Newtown, the key facts. Um, they've got a couple of pages then on the comments that came through. So, you know, Trio in needs a play park and benches. Um, something needs to be done to the shop. Um, Newtown has fantastic green spaces. So there were a range of, you know, sort of more negative comments coming through and some positive, and it was sort of sifting through really to see see what was required. So how they set it out or decided to set it out with our sort of input as well was to have a number of planning policies. So these will be the policies that um, form the SVG in a sense, so they're to do with um, land use. So um, things like loss of open space will be resisted, um, you know, loss of allotments would be resisted, that, that, that type of policy. Um, and then they also, where I mentioned the well-being issues and other th sort of things that were coming out that weren't so much land use, um, they decided to capture all of that, didn't lose any of it, you know, it wasn't sort of, oh yeah, thanks, you told us that, but we, we're not going to include any of that. What they decided to do is, in, is to actually include a project and action plan side of things, so things that weren't so much land use based. Um, have been collected in, in this action um, plan for the town council to move forward with over the next 15 years. So that, that's just a link there. I can get those to you after. Um, I think Claire may circulate this to you anyway, but so there's a link there to the new town town council. Um, they've got all their evidence base. They've done a fantastic job of collating it all on their town council pages. And there's also a link there to the Powys County Council um, consultation phase that's that's only just come to a close, actually. I think it finished the first week of May, uh, March. Sorry. Um, no, running most probably running short of time, but just, just one other um, slide here to say that we're now starting the process again with Chepstow. Chepstow Plan Council have decided they want a place plan. Um, we were commissioned um, just... January, um, just about a month before lockdown. <laughs> so that's been interesting. Um, that we were sort of commissioned on the basis of, yes, we'll do workshops, we'll go out in Chepstow, we'll talk to people, we'll do all this. That obviously all came to a halt. And what we've done is managed, we're, we're in the middle, this is a live consultation at the moment, um, and it's all been online so far. So if you go to chepstow.co.uk, you'll see that we've set up a, a place check uh, mapping system where people can actually so rather than talking to us face to face in a community hall sort of situation um, people are, are making their comments on place check uh, we've done some online surveys we're going to be running some focus groups workshops online now in may um, and we're also um, jen will be pleased to hear we've um, asked chepstow town council to sign up to the place making charter and we're thinking of developing the place plan around the place making themes so actually the the chapter headings will follow those themes so again really good link there with the um, place making charter so chapter is ongoing and it's 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 been problematic in a sense that it's having to happen during a pandemic um, whether we can get out and physically face to face chat with people in the coming months that's that's possibility but we're doing okay at the moment and 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 you know we are managing you know we've had a thousand hits on that website which is fantastic social media facebook so you know it, it, it's manageable you, it can be done um on an in an online sort of um way so sort of i thought we'll just go back to where we started you know can place plans help communities engage in the local planning process and I would very much say yes, they can. 
um, from the experience I've had anyway with working with um, on, on place plans. And, you know, these are some of the benefits. So it, the, pro the whole process would, it does empower the local community. Um, it is very much a community led and community needs focused um, way of working. Um, if you can get to a point where the place plan is adopted as SPG, then it will very much have a better influence on local decisions because it forms a material planning consideration. Um, local knowledge and expertise is very much gained. So we had local groups in Newtown, such as Civic Society and other people that came forward as volunteers to go and do footpath surveys, cycle route surveys, playground surveys and, and, and so on to gain this evidence. And they felt that they gained more um, from it. You know, they gained local knowledge and expertise and have had links with planning. So they now feel that they're better informed. It very much enhances the working relationship between the local planning authority, the community or town council and your community. And I've, I've seen that happen um, very much so in Newtown. You know, they now have a very strong link with the, pl the planning department. You know, they they know who to go to. They they, they have that link there. Um, they, it raises it's successful in raising projects. You saw that Newtown has, has got projects now that they can run with for the next 15 years or so. And they have come from community right through. And, and this is the lasting um, sort of point, really, that the evidence collected can be used broadly. To, it doesn't necessarily have to be just used for the place plan. And Newtown now have, have told me, and, and, you know, it's of interest, and, you know, it's, it's not a sort of cheap process to go through. I guess they did have funding from the Regen team at Powys. You know, we were commissioned as consultants, so there was, um, you know, a certain element of um, fees to be paid for that side of things and, and, and another costs involved. Um, Sorrel is a paid officer, um, but they do feel that the place plan has already paid for itself through the funding that they've now got into the town. So they've managed to use all that evidence and they're applying for um, you know, lottery funding and, and different uh, green spaces funding and so on. And this funding now is, is coming into the town um, and, and that quote there is, is, is from the town council itself, you know, it has already paid for itself and, we, and it hasn't really even been fully adopted yet, you know, so that, that's fantastic. So coming to the end, place plans guidance, we, we produced a website um, a couple of years ago, so that, that's really useful. If anyone is thinking about the concept of a place plan, I would very much advise go to that website, have a look. There's lots of information on there. Um, again, our website will um, outline these concepts and the planning um, side of things. We've also got a helpline number. So if any one of you uh, want additional advice, planning advice, um, you know, please feel free to ring that number. Um, and that's it, really. Conclusion um, there. We have got another event in June where we teamed up with One Voice Wales. Um, we're looking at uh, regeneration of Welsh towns sort of post-COVID, so that may be of interest to some of you as well. So thank you very much. And uh, any questions? I'll be glad to have a go at answering. <laughs> thank you. I think there's um, a question in the chat, actually, from okay. um, Joanne. And okay. um, both, both yourself and Jan might have an opinion on this. But um, the question is, if um, Joanne doesn't mind me reading it out, is what or who defines the parameters of a place? And how would a community group with no knowledge of anything like this go about engaging with the local planning authority to influence the development of where they live and I, I wonder if one of the first places for them to go is to the place um, plans website I'll be sending out all of the links about the discussion including um, the place making charter after the event today but, um, I can leave that um, question open to you Karen if that's okay yeah I, I would say you know to take a look if it's something that's of interest to you and you feel that you your community would benefit from engaging in in the local planning um, issues. Then, yeah, start with that website. It's it's a really good resource, um, and I would very much say that having that initial link with the um, local planning authority is is really important as well. 
um, the planning policy team, just, just as an example, really, uh, with the planning policy team at Powers will be doing a review of their local development plan. Um, that, that's something that every local planning authority has to do. You know, once they've adopted a plan, it's sort of into the next cycle of review it. And, 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 and it's just an ongoing process. And, and they've, they sort of indicated that the evidence that Newtown Town Council have gathered can be used for the review of the, of the plan, you know, because those people, the local community know Newtown so much better than the policy planners, you know, at Paris. So it's, um, they, they very much encourage um, this input from local communities and, and that's where the place plans sort of come in really. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answer. I was gonna say, just to comment, uh, to follow up on my question, because I know the area where I'm working is in Newport. So it's okay. obviously a big um, area, a big is the city yeah. um, or large town, you know, but it's a city officially, isn't it? But um, I don't think anyone's particularly interested in the bit of Newport that I'm um, working in. So I don't think that it sort of features on any LDPs or anything. Do you, do you know what I mean? And I think okay. for the residents who live there, I think they've got ambitions and aspirations that they'd like to see, but it's almost like they're constantly overlooked and other parts of the city are um, given priority, um, you know, and, and the changes that they want to make or the things that they'd like to see. So there's great bits of work going on um, in terms of, you know, community engagement, some really active groups. Um, mm. And, you know, and I'm sort of saying to them, you know, lots of, you know, community work to you know mm. do planting and have an allotment and stuff like that but actually I think they don't know where to go with it yeah. Um, yeah. on a bigger scale or you know it's can we do this it's, it's that permission seeking because they're not the landowner you know traffic control you, and all of those sorts of things everything that would feed into making the place that they you know parks whatever it might be the ambitions that they've got I think they almost don't know where to go with it um mm. and you know for me I'm sort of thinking well I, I want to find out to be able to help them to you know break down some of those barriers mm. the um yeah place plan isn't for every place you know it, it, it's obviously suited and it, it, in a way it is suited to a town or, or mm. village setting isn't it you know yeah. whereas like you say Newport um it, it, and I would say sort of knowing the stage that Newport city council are at at the moment with their LDP they are going to be going out to consultation over the coming months because they are now working on their replacement LDP yeah so there's going to be an opportunity over the coming months for community groups and represent representatives from the area to get involved with the LDP in that way um, so it may may not necessarily have that sort of lower level place plan going on in Newport, but there's definitely an opportunity to get involved with the revised policies um, that will be coming out. So, um, I, you know, if you I can definitely send you the contacts at the policy team if you want to be yeah, do that. That, it, would, um, that would be brilliant. I think, you know, it's it's a it's a massive, um, you know, monster Newport Council trying to find out who is responsible yeah. for anything. You know, I work for Pobble and I can't even get someone in my organisation who works in development, who works with these people to help me, to tell me who I need to speak yeah. to. You yeah. know, so it's like, it's like, you know, what hope is there for the people living in my community? Yeah, you know, yeah. Community it's, it's, it's understanding the process, isn't it? And there is a process with an LDP. There is a sort of time frame where there's an opportunity to get involved, you know, but it's knowing that, isn't it? You know, it's, and like you say, as a local community, you, it's very hard to know that, and you have yeah, to you're really so far delve down the food chain. But that's right, you know, the it's, person who comes out of your door of a morning and walks down that street. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally that understand, and, and that's that school. That's a big sort of gripe of mine, really. That if you want to find out something about planning policy you have to click about 12 times on a planning website to actually get down to the point where, you know, when is the community consultation happening? And, and, and people, you know, it's hard even for someone who knows, understands planning. So people on the street are just not gonna, you know, it, it is really difficult, isn't it? And things need to be made easier um, for people to, to access, access that information. So, um, 
yeah, I can send you a link or, or a name or, or something um, if you um, Claire yeah. perhaps can put me in touch with you afterwards. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I think I think the regeneration team might be of use as well, actually, because yeah. it's like you say, Karen, the LDPs are often you know, the reason you know, maybe why your community isn't represented there is because they are often at a higher level. And if there's no sort of strategic level site identified in the neighbourhood, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 the regen team again would be a good um so regen gets more down to sort of neighborhood level doesn't yeah it? yeah definitely yeah okay thank you thanks that's good useful advice i'll be knocking on some doors then <laughs> fantastic um i can see that chris has had his um hand up for a while as well if you've got a question chris yeah, thanks. In a way, it goes on from, from what Joanne's been talking about there. I mean, I think Karen has captured very well um, place planning, and I think it's a really brilliant concept. Um, I'm a member of the Brecon Beacons National Park Authority. Uh, Karen will know, and we, we, we have four uh, place planned mm. places at the moment. Now, the interesting thing, and this comes back to what Joanne was talking about, the interesting thing is they're all places with huge levels of agency. They're mm. it's Pal, Palgarth, Hay, Brecon yeah. and Crick Howell. You know, there's a lot of people there with a lot of skills, i.e. legal skills. Uh, they have a yeah. lot of power invested in those communities. They mm. have contacts, they've got networks, and they're able then to mobilise very effectively. Mm. What we need to do uh, sorry, what agencies need to do that support, support place planning is invest time in those marginalised communities because there's no point uh, developing the already successful ones because what you do is you create a greater disparity for the people who have less. So the emphasis has to be on those disadvantaged communities. If we're seriously going to deal mm. with the, the social injustice and inequality in our society, our planning needs to be focused at that end of, of the community, not the successful end of the community. Otherwise, we're just going to increase, increase greater disparity. So that would be my clarion call to you guys, is we've mm -hmm. got to start addressing those issues. Otherwise, not, we're not gonna solve the societal problems that are, you know, really, the, the pandemic has illustrated the inequality. We have to deal with this stuff and we've got to embrace those communities so that they feel empowered to want to be part of this process. That's where the work has to be, not supporting the people who already know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally ag agree with you there. And, and like you say, you when you read out the examples of towns and villages that have gone through it, they are quite affluent. <laughs> they, they know how to do these things, you know, and as Joanne mentioned, she's working in an area where people just wouldn't know where to turn to to do it. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, uh, you know, we we do try and sort of, when we're doing the community engagement, you know, the hard to reach groups, the older people, the younger people, that you know, all the different people that we, groups that we can think of, but it is very hard to engage with everybody. Um, and, and it's the usual suspects, isn't it? It's, it's that, like you say, it's the usual people that will turn up at a workshop event. <laughs> it's the, the same demographic, usually, you know. Um, and I agree, there's a real need to delve deeper and get a, a, a range of other people involved, yeah. That's brilliant, thank you. I think there's some really good points made there about um, engaging more of the community that yes. perhaps don't usually become engaged yeah. in, uh, in these sorts of things. Time's marching on a little bit now, but I wanted to give people a chance to, um, to talk to each other through some breakout groups. So what I'm going to do is, um, is put you into breakout, breakout groups for about 10 to 15 minutes just to talk about how perhaps um, communities and um, community-led housing groups can use the place baking principles and place plans to contribute to the creation and enhancement of where people live, work, which is um, for some of us, it's the same place at the moment, and, and spend their time really. And I think um, a lot of good points have been made, but if you go with me, I'll... Um, start those breakout groups.
just um, for a short time as um, time is marching on, but just to give you a chance to, um, to talk to each other. Um, so I'll open those rooms. I know some people have had to, um, have had to drop off the call for other meetings. Thursdays seem to be the day for that. So I'll just open those rooms now and um, you should get something up on your screen asking you to join. Hi, it looks like um, everyone's back with us now um, and time is certainly um, marching on a little bit. Um, but we would really like to get those breakout sessions in because we know how much people value that little opportunity to kind of talk to each other about what's been um, what's been covered. Did anyone have any feedback? feedback we've got just a couple of minutes if anyone wants to contribute to some feedback that would that would be great i think one of the things i'd, I'd like to know more about is how the place plans can support the creation of uh, affordable homes in different areas and also how they they might relate to smaller uh, towns and communities and um Specifically, I guess, in, in rural Wales, where I am, um, where you've got uh, different kind of issues going on, probably. Definitely. I think there's definitely a role for us to um, to liaise with people who conducted place plans a lot more, really, to um, to try and have a look, look at that. Um, I think, Chris, you were trying to say something a little bit earlier. Well, I was basically going to ask Lydia if she wanted to mention her proposal at the end, which I thought was a really good one. Lydia? <laughs> um, Tip in if I've got it wrong, but I basically was talking about um, people who um, I was agreeing with Chris and with Joanne about folk who needing more support in uh, rural areas, in, in, in urban areas. And one of the things we thought was that it might be helpful to empower people by organising some, um, just a, a bus trip from uh, a place where there's some people can find out from other people um, what, what it's all about and, and just have it as a kind of a day out as well. You know, don't make it heavy, make it fun, make it a, a break, a day out, take the kids as well, so that different communities could meet different communities. Like, you know, maybe a trip from Newport to Newtown to see, you know, and, and that's that was just one of the ideas because it, it, just asking people what they want and what they want to do and stuff we were saying is, is quite hard. You know, when you're feeling fed up and, 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 and stressed out, you don't particularly want to. Sometimes so, you need to see it, don't you? Yeah, you need to and see get it. get that inspiration. It. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And um, I th that, that, was, that was the idea. I mean, it worked very well. The... Uh, the community um, led team organized trips to go to see community led housing in 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 Bristol um, just before COVID and that was that was really encouraging for people who are struggling to set them up so if maybe something like that could happen um, yeah that, that's yeah. A, that's a really good idea actually and yeah like you say after COVID um, you know yeah. when we are allowed to move around and interact mm. a bit more I think I would really like to you know sort of broaden because where I work often people you know haven't gone outside of the city or you know have it. I think the other thing I've lived in London for 20 years so for me coming back to Wales which I'm from originally you know I've seen things you know it's almost like it's you know 20 years ahead or something sometimes and I think for me coming back to Wales and working in Pobble I sort of sit there and think they've done this somebody's done it already you know mm. it's like why are we trying to think of this now it's like they did mm. it 10 years ago when mm. I was, and and, it, and there's lessons to learn everything didn't work but it's like why are we trying to reinvent the wheel yeah. often yeah. you know I think, I think it could be a, a two-way trip as well because um Lots of people in, 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 out, in the, out in the sticks get fed up of it. So they probably like a trip to Newport. So you could do a return <laughs> yeah. trip as well. Yeah. Okay, there you go then. We've got a, we've got a, a trip, an outing, yeah. an exchange. 
Yeah. We've, ju we've value. just done some um, planning, aid work. we've just done some research on the value of engagement, community engagement. And the one thing that's come out is that people really um, that find it beneficial to have case studies. So, you know, it's, it's, it, you, you've got a wide spectrum of people here, haven't you? And, and to actually start developing case studies of, of things and don't always have to be things that have gone well. You know, it can also be things that haven't gone so well, possibly. But um, that's real benefit to have a written up case study, photographs, um, and that can be shown to, to other groups. And, you know, like Joanne, you could have a one of a Newport one, which then could be shown to someone in North Wales, isn't it? You know, and um, so, yeah, there's real benefit of that. I think um, I think as a team, we've seen the benefit in um, when we were able to take people places. So mm. um, I know that our partners in DTA did a trip to Bristol, which Lydia attended to see community led housing there. And um, we've taken um, groups a bit further along in our project to Bristol, too. And there's been um, huge value in that. Um, I'm actually, I know that there's people who have to go to other events now, <laughs> and it seems such a shame to draw the, um, to draw things to a conclusion. I think we could talk about this all afternoon, but um, what, what I will say is that um, a huge thank you to Jen and to Karen for attending. I think um, people have put challenges to you today about, um, certainly about community engagement, which you've handled handled really well and there's discussions to be followed up there um, we are going to send out information and um, the recording after the event as well but um, I know there's probably more points that people have to make so um, certainly you you have my email so I'd encourage you to send those across to us and we can um, we can have a think about how we can help people take some of these things forward um, when we reflect on today's meeting as well but I am um, I am going to draw things to a close unfortunately um, next month um, we're actually going to be talking about um, what is one of Dave Palmer's favourite people and um, because it's the 250th anniversary of the birth of Robert Owen so we're going to be talking about um, cooperatives and so on and, and reflecting on um, what Robert Owen achieved which links to Newtown very yeah. Yeah. That was, that's where he was born yeah, that's also, um, we've also started doing some local meetups which are much more discussion based so I'll send out details of those as well so yeah, so discussion can continue and I'll encourage people to attend those but I'm going to let people get on with their afternoons and get ahead go to their other meetings, they have their lunch, enjoy the sunshine. It's lovely. I'm in Murtha, so, and the sun is lovely today, even though I'm a, I'm a bit cold, but I'm always cold lately. I think it's been sat behind a table too much, but um, I'll let people get on with their days. And by all means, um, send me an email if you've got other feedback that you want to give on this topic today. So, so we can, um, we can address that or any questions that you feel haven't been addressed, but Again, a huge thank you to um, Jen and Karen for presenting today. It's been really interesting. So I'll, I'll let everyone get on. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Uh, thank Bye. You. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Good. Alvin had a comment. I'll um, save the discussion, Dave, because I think he put a comment in the discussion about um, something. So I'll save that so we can have a look later. I was just so conscious of time and you've got your event at two. Yeah, no. That's fine. I, I, I 